All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is uh, Wednesday morning, January the 12th, uh, 2022. Um, and this morning, I uh, today and the next couple days, I'm not able to do a 10 o'clock live daily manna, but this is a new daily manna uh, that I'm having to pre-record. Um, but I wasn't able to do it today live. Um, so we're going to be, so I'm not able to, I mean, I could greet everyone that normally comes and I could do that, but then I end up forgetting someone or leaving someone out. So good morning, everyone, and uh, be sure to greet one another this morning. Say hello uh, to each other, and uh, today is the 12th, and so today we're going to look at um, Psalm 72, and Psalm 72 is this, um, it's this psalm, it's, it's called the last of the prayers of David, and it's a psalm of David uh, praying for his son, uh, for Solomon, concerning Solomon, as Solomon is going to be become the king. Um, and so, as in fact, we're going to look at the very end, by the way, we're going to look at the very end of Psalm 132, which is one of the Psalms for today. Um, and the desire, this is to be like being prayed over Solomon at his coronation. Um, and the desire is that, that under Solomon, that the kingdom would function the way God's kingdom is intended to function. That with Solomon as his king, with the son of David as his king, that the, as the king over the people, that the land, the desire, the prayer is that the land would function almost as though God himself were king. Because that was always the intention, right? It was always God's intention that, that, um, that he be our king, that he be the king of our hearts, that he be the king over uh, over the people. You know, I, I, uh, um, people all the time have talked about, you know, we've always heard people saying, talking about the way God's people should function, the church this or the church that, and uh, the church should be doing such and such. And the, the realization is that you and I, we, we are the church. As we are, when two or three of us are gathered together in his name, he is in our midst. We are God's house, a, a a house of living stones. And the and so the question isn't the what the church should be doing, but what should we be doing as God's representatives, as as uh where we are that his kingdom would be established, that the li- that life as God intends would be established and would be lived out in and through us. And so, you know, I titled today's uh Daily Manna, Your Kingdom in Me and through me, your kingdom in me and through me, that, that there would be that kind of impact. And just so, so that just as David was praying that under Solomon's rule, that it would be as though God himself were ruling, that it would function that way. Our prayer, our desire is that in whatever the Lord has entrusted into my, my domain, into your domain, right, that that which you rule over, and at the very least, you have self-control, we have self-control, right? And, and that in that, it would be life as God intends. And in that our homes, that the place where we, where we, the people that encounter us, the people that are under your authority, the pe- that the, it would be as though God himself, they would encounter the spirit of the living God living in us and through us. Uh, they would encounter the love of Yeshua. And obviously, that's a tall order. The prayer here is a tall order, and yet it's the desire. It's what we strive toward. It's what we reach toward. It's what we say, Holy Spirit, form in me. And so he opens it up here. And I want to, you know, again, you remember the original plan was for the Lord to be king. In 1 Samuel 8, uh, verse 5, and they come and they said to, uh, they said to him, uh, to Samuel, Behold, you have grown old. And your sons don't walk in your ways. Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. We want to be like everybody else. But the matter was displeasing in Samuel's eyes when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to Adonai. Then Adonai said to Samuel, listen to the voice of the people in all that they say to you. For they've not rejected you, rather they've rejected me from being king over them like all the deeds that they have done since the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and worshiping other gods. So they are doing to you also. So now listen to their voice. However, you must earnestly forewarn them and declare to them the rulings of the king who will reign over them. Now Samuel reported all the words of Adonai to the people who were asking him for a king. This will be the practice of the king that will reign over you. 
He said, he will draft your sons and assign them as charioteers and horsemen. And they will run before his chariots. He will appoint them as commanders of thousands and captains of fifties. Also some to plow his fields, reap his harvest, make his weapons of war and the equipment for his chariots. Also he will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks and bakers. He will seize the best of your fields, vineyards and olive groves and give them to his courtiers. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officials and slaves. He will also take your male and female servants, your best young men and your donkeys, and make them to do his work. He will also take the tenth of your flocks. Then you yourselves will become his slaves. When the day comes and you cry out because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, Adonai will not answer you on that day. But the people refused to listen to Samuel, and they said, No, but a king should be over us, so we may become like all the nations, having our king who will judge us go out before us and fight our battles. After Samuel heard all the words of the people, he reported them back in the hearing of Adonai. Adonai said to Samuel, listen to their voice and appoint a king to reign for them. So Samuel said to the men of Israel, go each one to his own. And so the question is, who's going to rule? Am I going to rule in my own kingdom, in my own life? Am I going to give rule to, in like do what I want when I want like all those around me or do I submit to the Lord as king? Am I choosing my own rulership, choosing another king over my kingdom, over this kingdom, or do I submit it to the Lord? And so now David is praying for a, a reestablishment of God's ways, of God's kingdom, and he's praying this over his son, and he says, give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. Let let. Let, let him have your justice. Let him govern as you would govern. May he, have, may he operate in your righteousness. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor ones or the afflicted ones with justice. Let the mountains bring shalom to the people and the hills righteousness, right? So that in the, in the far reaches of the land that there would be shalom, there would be wholeness, that this king would rule in a way that, that the people, that everyone's experiencing this wholeness and this peace and that righteousness, that the right rulings and the right, the just rightness is rolling through the hills. May he vindicate, may, or may he mishpat, may he yishpot is to give justice to, to the poor of the people. May he sat, save the children of the needy and crush the oppressor. Right, because that's what the Lord does. Right? The, Lord, the Lord does justice for the afflicted. The Lord saves the children of those who are in need. The Lord is the one who crushes the oppressor, who gets in front and he crushes the oppressor. Let them fear, while, fear you while the sun endures and while the moon lasts throughout all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field like showers watering the ground, right? So there's this refreshing that when he, that when this king, when my, he's saying when my son rules as king, may it be refreshing on, like, like rain on a, on a mown field where there's that fragrance, like showers watering the ground. Let the righteous flourish in his days. Let them bloom and sprout in his days. Let shalom abound until the new moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth, right? So may he rule to the uttermost parts of the earth and, and why wouldn't you want him to rule if everywhere where he rules there is shalom and there is righteousness and the poor are not taken advantage of but they're vindicated, they're treated, they're governed with, with, with his justice and with rightness and, and that his ways, that everyone is cared for, everyone is looked out for, that, that his kingdom is life as God intends. Let the desert dwellers bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. May kings of Tarshish and the islands bring tribute. Kings of Sheba and Seba offer gifts. So let all nations bow down before him and all nations serve him. Right, so let let this happen. He says, "Why? Why should why should this happen? Why would we want this to be?" Again, it's because he he is kinging just like God kings. He's ruling and reigning with God's judgments, 
with God's justice, that if we implement God's judgments, that he is, then, then we do what he does. And it says in verse 12, he rescues the needy. Right, he, he rescues the poor, he rescues the oppressed, crying for help. Also, the poor and the one with no helper, with no one to help him, the one who's alone, the one who's isolated, the one who has no one to fight for him, that he, may all these other, the nations and the kings and everyone be under his rule because he does things right, he takes care of, he, he doesn't just take care of those who are in a pack, but he takes care of those who have become isolated, those who are off to themselves, those who are needy, those who are afflicted. From oppression and from violence, he redeems their soul. For precious is their blood in his sight, right? Valuable. Their blood is valuable to him. They matter to him, right? So the, so the implication then is as he rules, as God rules, is that each one And we know this from other psalms that each one, that God's people are valuable to him, precious to him, that he doesn't go, well, they're pawns, right? They're they're nobodies. Uh, They're casualties. No, no, no. No, for the Lord, each life is precious. For the Lord, each one matters. Their blood is precious in his sight, valuable in his sight. And so the king is to rule in a way that cares for the most the least significant of the people, that they are precious to him, that they matter to him. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May he pray for him continually and bless him all day. Let there be abundance of grain in the land. Let it sway on the tops of the hills. Let its fruit be like Lebanon. And let people of the city flourish like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May his name increase before the sun and may all nations be blessed by him and call him blessed. Blessed be Adonai Elohim, God of Israel, who alone does wonders. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May all the earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, son of Jesse, are complete. So this is this coronation psalm, right? And and what you see is, you know, that the desire that for the Lord, just as it was for Abraham, is I'll bless him. I'll, he says, I'm going to bless you so that through you all the families of the earth will be blessed. That God's desire was that the blessing not somehow be like locked up and kept from, with his own people, but that it overflow, that, the, that there be a restoration, that all the world would know, that the whole earth would be filled with his glory and would know who he is. Obviously, Solomon didn't live up to this prayer, right? But a son of David did. A son of David did live up to it. And we see that in, at the back end of Psalm 132. Psalm 132, 11. It says, Adonai has sworn to David, a true promise he will not revoke. From the fruit of your body I will set one upon your throne. If your children keep my covenant and my law that I will teach them, then their sons will sit on your throne forever. For the Lord Adonai has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling. This is my resting place forever. Here I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her food. I will satisfy her needy ones with bread. I will clothe her kohanim, her priests, with salvation, with Yeshua, and her godly ones, her chesed ones, those of her, uh, those of covenant loyalty and love, with uh, with will sing aloud for joy. There will I make a horn spring up for David. I will set up a lamp for my anointed. For my Mashiach, his enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon himself his crown will shine that indeed he was pointing to a son of david um, that would sit on the throne forever that yeshua is son of david the, the king messiah who has come to establish his kingdom in our hearts who has come to make us new who has come to transform us to be um, what god intended us to be and that in us and through us god's kingdom would be established not a kingdom that goes and conquers and crushes like the kings of this world Right? They, king, they were asking for the king, a king like the kings of this world. And that's not what God wanted for his people. 
God had come to overthrow the kingdoms of this world to reestablish his kingdom to life as God intends. Not, a, not an overthrowing that, that, uh, so that there can just be crushing and violence, but that so there could be his shalom and his peace and his righteousness and his, and his joy. So when we rule as he rules, then we follow his way. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. Yeshua says, when you, when you see me, you've seen the Father. And when we see him, he's down washing the disciples' feet. He's saying a servant. Uh, uh, a servant is, uh, is no greater than his master. So now do what I have done for you. Do what I, follow me. Follow me as my students. And that's what we're supposed to walk in his ways. And so that his kingdom would be established in us. That his ways would be the ruling rules laws the law of love would be the law that rules our hearts this is my desire to honor you lord with all my heart i worship you all i have within me I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me there was a song we used to sing when i was a kid called jesus be the lord of all or yeshua be the lord of all we said jesus be the lord of all. jesus be the lord of all yeshua be the lord of all yeshua be the lord of all the kingdoms of my heart Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. Jesus be the Lord of all. The kingdoms of my heart. Jesus I surrender all. Jesus, I surrender all. Jesus, I surrender all. The kingdoms of my heart. All to Yeshua, I surrender. All to Him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Hallelujah. Have your own way, Lord. Have your own way. You are the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after your will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have your own way, Lord. Have your own way. Hold o'er my being. 
hold o'er my being absolute sway fill with your spirit till all shall see you only always living in me lord our desires that your kingdom would be established in us that wherever we rule wherever we have authority wherever we have dominion however large or small that area is however large or small that that place in our lives is lord that in that place that you would be lord of all that your shalom that your ways would rule and reign that our homes would be life as god intends that our workplaces that our workstation, wherever we are, would be life as God intends. That our cars, when we're driving and it's our domain, that that place would be filled with your spirit, with life as God intends. That the things that we speak forth, the things that we say, would be an expression of your character. That those who encounter us would encounter you, Lord. Come set your rule and reign. In our hearts again, increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. We are your church. We need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captives hearts released the hurt the sick the poor at peace we lay down our lives for heaven's cause we are your church we pray revive this earth Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set our hearts on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here. We pray to build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hands. Heal our streets and land. Set our hearts on fire. Win this nation back. Change the atmosphere. Build your kingdom here, we pray. Lord, let your kingdom be established here. Let your will be done here on earth, in my life, in my home, in our lives, in our homes, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we need you. Have your way in us and through us. Build your kingdom, Lord, in us and through us. A kingdom that's characterized in a way that as though you yourself, as though you yourself were were sitting on the throne of our hearts and sitting on the throne of what we rule. Lord, we give that throne to you. Be the Lord of all the kingdoms of our hearts, we pray. In Yeshua's name, amen, amen. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, shalom. Have a beautiful day.